Hello, Theory Scholars. So in this video, we're going to be looking at part writing tonic and dominant chords with inversions. So if you can write tonic and dominant chords in root position, then you're set. We're going to be applying all of the same principles as we used before. We just have to figure out how to work with the inverted. We just have to think about doubling for inverted chords, but otherwise, just about everything is the same. So if you're not familiar with that, there's a, a link in the um, comments below so you can go back to the video where we worked on tonic and dominant chords in root position, get comfortable with those, and then swing back here. Okay, so we're gonna work through this in the same way, in the exact same order. We need to figure out what key we're in, and then we're gonna figure out how to spell the tonic and how to spell the dominant. And then we're just gonna try to part right as smoothly as we can between each of those chords, resolving our tendency tones as we go. Okay, so I am working in a key with two sharps, so the major key would be D major, right? The minor key would be B minor. Um, and I see these minor ones here. So I know then if that's the case that I'm working in B minor because in the minor keys, we have minor tonic chords, right? If it was a major key, those would be major chords. Okay, so as a reference, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spell out my one chord here somewhere on my scratch paper, right? And then a five chord also. And I'm just gonna use this to refer to these chords as I'm going along to the spelling as I'm part writing through them. And I'm just gonna have it all in one spot. Okay, so my one chord in the key of B minor. So imagine your B on the stop, B minor chord. So visualize your snowman above it. So my one chord is gonna be a B, D, F sharp because of the key signature, right? And then my five chord, imagine five on the staff, so an F on the staff. Okay, and imagine your snowman above it, so it's gonna be F sharp, because of the key signature, A, C sharp. Okay, now I'm missing one thing though. So remember when we're working in the minor key, what do we need to do with the dominant chord, the five chord? There's something about an accidental, do you remember? So we need to, raise the leading tone of the chord. We always raise the leading cone in the five chord and the dominant chord in the minor key, minor key only. So the leading tone is scale degree seven. So we might imagine one in the staff, if that's scale degree one, scale degree seven, and the minor key would be an A, and if I raise that up, it would be an A sharp. Um, another way to think of that is the leading tone in the five chord is always the third of the chord. So I can also just raise up the third of the chord and that'll give me the same result. But I do need to raise up the leading tone. I need to raise up A in that chord. And remember, um, I'm gonna circle this in my spelling because I need to be conscious of that leading tone for two reasons, right? As I'm going along, I need to make sure that I'm not, I'm not doubling the leading tone, but I also need to make sure that I resolve it up to scale degree one if it's in an outer voice. So I need to be really aware of it. So I'm gonna circle it in my spelling so that I'm conscious every time I write it, I'm gonna circle it and make sure it resolves correctly and I don't double it. Okay, so let's get started here then. Okay, so when I've got inversions, what I suggest that you do is you write your bass note first because there's this is the only note in the chord where there's really no question about what that has to be, right? We know the bass note, if it's a one six chord, has to be the third of the chord. And then you've got, you've got freedom as to how you arrange things above it. So write your bass first because that we know it has to be a specific note. So if it's a one six chord, that means we have a one chord in first inversion or a one chord that has a third in the bass. So D has to go into the base of this chord. So I'm gonna write that first. Okay. And then I'm gonna write my chord in order. So I've already got the D in the chord. I'm gonna go back to the top and I'm gonna write the whole thing in order and I will double at the end. So I need a B, so I'm gonna write my B next. So in the beginning, you can really kind of space things out however you like. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that we keep an octave between the top two, the top three voices, soprano and alto and then alto and tenor. Okay, so I've got my B, I've got my D, I need an F sharp now. So let's see, maybe I'll stick my F sharp here. Okay, now in a first inversion chord, in a root position chord, we always double the root. We double the base of the chord. In a first inversion chord, you can really kind of double whatever you like. Um, whatever's gonna give you the smoothest voice leading as long as it's not a tendency tone. So in the five chord, we're never gonna double that A sharp, but otherwise you've got options. And it depends on the textbook you're looking at. Some, um, some authors will really suggest you really maybe you should double the bass 
the root of the chord, the fifth might be the last one that you double, but really as long as you've got smooth voice leading and it's on a tendency tone, that's okay. Um, so why don't we try maybe, let's see here, maybe I'll double, I'll double the root of the chord, I'll go with the B. Okay, let's go with that. So I've got everything in the chord, I've doubled my bass. My spacing, just to make sure, especially in the first chord, that my spacing looks good, everything's within an octave, an octave, I think we're all set. Okay, so on to the next chord, five, six. So again, first thing, write your bass because there's no question about what that needs to be. So if it's a five, six chord, that means I've got a first inversion chord, so the third of the chord is in the bass, that's my A sharp. So I'm gonna write the A sharp first, and I need to remember to raise that up, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna circle it right away in my spelling, so I remember I need to resolve this note if it's in an outer voice and I need to not double this note <laughs> as I'm going along. Okay, now F, so I'm gonna start at the top and I'm just gonna work my way through, double my note last. Okay, so your MO here is to try to move everything as smoothly as possible. So I'm looking for the smoothest place to put an F. Well, if I put it in the soprano, it would be a leap. The alto, this would be the same tone, a common tone, this would be a leap. So the smoothest place to put that F would be to leave it alone in the alto voice. Okay, so I have an F, I get an A, so I now I need my C. So in this case, it really doesn't matter. I could put the C here, I could put the C here. Both of these are gonna give me a stepwise motion. So I could go to either voice. Maybe let's say I, let's see, I put it, put it here. Okay, so now I've got F, A, C. I could double anything I want. Um, except the tensei tone, no A. So I can double the F sharp, I can double the C sharp. So which one's gonna give me the smoothest voicing if I double the F or the C? Well, if I go to F, it's a great, it's a great big leap, right? If I go to C, it's just a step. So that looks pretty good. So let me try that. Okay, now, before I go on to the next chord, I just need to make sure that I don't have any parallels between the chords that I just wrote, right? So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for any two voices that are moving in the same way. So, <laughs> excuse me, if my top goes, voice goes up by step, do you see any other voices that move up by step? I do, I see one, do you see it? Okay, now parallel motion isn't the bad thing, but I do need to make sure if I have parallels that it's not either parallel octaves or parallel fifths. Everything else, parallel thirds, sixths, these are all fine. So what is this interval, C to C? Oh no, no, these are parallel octaves. It's gotta go, it's gotta go. Okay, so now I've gotta rethink this. I've gotta rethink what I've done. I can't have the parallel octave. So is there another way I could fix this? So I'm gonna think back to the last couple decisions that I made. One of the decisions I made was to double this C. Well, if I didn't double that C, what I would have had instead, I couldn't double the A, because that's a tendency tone. I would have had to go to F instead. Well, this is a pretty big leap. I think we can do better. If you notice that you've got a leap in your voice lighting, there's probably a different way that you could part write this. Okay, well, I did make one other choice. In the first chord, I had to choose what to double, and I chose to double the root of the chord. But I could have doubled any of these other notes, so let's see if there's a different way I could do this. So if I go back, instead of doubling the B here, maybe let's try doubling the D. Let's go for the third of the chord. Okay, so maybe instead, see, I'll put a D here. And if I do that, now if I go back to this chord, I've got an F, an A, a C, and I can double either the F or the C. Well, F is still gonna give me, I guess I have a skip of a third. C gives me a step. Could I do this now? Well, let's check it. Let's check for parallels. So this voice goes up by step. Do any other voices go up by step? Mm -mm. No, right? Stays the same, goes down by step, goes down by leap, okay. I'm not worried about voices that stay the same. This one goes down by step. Anything else go down by step? Nope, this goes a leap. Anything else leap down? Nope, we're good. All right, we've checked for parallels. We've fixed, we've fixed our parallels, we're good to go. Okay, before we go on to the next chord, if you have any tendency tones, the very first thing you do is resolve those tendency tones if they need to resolve. Don't even bother spelling the chord out because there's no argument. Um, if you've got a tendency tone that needs to resolve. So if you've got a five chord to a one chord, you're looking for your leading tone. If it's in an outer voice, it needs to resolve up by step. So in the outer voice, this needs to resolve up to B. Now you notice when you've got a five, six chord, because the leading tone is in the bass, 
leading tone has to go up by step to scale degree one. The five six chord is always gonna go to a root position one. This is typical, and the reason is is because that leading tone has to resolve. If it doesn't, if it goes to a one six chord, it can't resolve, which is why we always see it this way. It's always a root position one. Okay, so I've resolved my leading tone. Now I'm just gonna spell out my tonic chord, and I'm gonna go from there. Okay, so I've got a B already. There's my B, and I'm just gonna go in order, do the doubled note last. B is there, so the next note I need is D. Where is the smoothest place I can put D? Well, from the soprano, that would be a step. That'd be good. This would be a skip, that'd be a step. Okay, so either of those two spots would be fine. Let's say maybe I'll put it in the soprano. Okay, so I've got B, D, now I need an F sharp, smoothest place for F sharp. Stay the same, leap, stay the same. Okay, so I've got everything there. I've got B, D, F sharp, doubled note last. In a root position chord, we double the root, right? So what I want is another, excuse me, another B in this chord. Okay, so before I do anything else, just check for parallels. This goes up by step. Anything else go up by step? Sure. Do you see it? What other voice is it? The bass, right? Okay, so what is the interval between these? From B to D is a third, so we're good to go. Parallel thirds, no problem. Okay, so keep checking. Stays the same. We don't worry about that. This goes down by step. Nothing else goes down by step. We're good. Continuing on. All right, so we're going from a one to a one six chord. So we're actually keeping all the same notes. The only thing that changes here is the bass, right? If it's a one six chord, that means the third of the chord is in the bass. So I know no matter what, I need a D in the bass. And then above that, I just need to get everything in and I can double something else. So I've already got a D, so I'm gonna start at the top. I need a B, so I could keep the B there if I wanted. I've already got my D, I need an F sharp, and then I can double anything I want, either a B, a D, or an F. The D is certainly gonna give me the smoothest voicing, voicing, right? I can keep that the same. Everything stays the same. The only thing that changes is the bass. This works. This is really smooth voicing. The only thing I might say is that it's not, it's not very interesting, right? I've got three voices that are staying exactly the same as common tones. And so in this case, it might be you know, oftentimes we want to keep common tones, but if we have so many, it might be a nice idea to at least move one of the voices. Now, there's no way to do it by step, but by skip is a nice little touch. When you go to one to a one six chord, one one thing that composers like to do is create what are called voice exchanges. Um, so the bass moves up by third. I can just flip these two different voices from B goes to B and D goes to D, so I move this down to a B. I still have all my B, D, F, I've doubled the root of the chord, I just have a skip of the third, and these two switch spots. And this is something you can do if you're going between two different versions of the chord, would be to flip two voices around between the bass and one of the upper voices. And it's just one way to create just a little bit of variety in the line. You don't have to, you could keep it the way you had it before too, and that would also work. All right, well, I think I'm gonna go for that though, just for a little bit of interest here. Okay, then, moving on. Okay, so on to my five chord. I don't have any tendency tones to resolve, so I'm gonna go ahead and write it. Write your bass note first. So if it's a root position five, I know that F sharp has to go in the bass, no questions asked. And then I'm gonna go in order. I have my F, I need an A sharp. Smoothest place to put it would be, well, let's see. So I could put it, I could certainly put it here, right? That'd be a step. I could put it in this voice, oops. I could put it in the tenor. That would also be a step. The alto would be a leap. So either of those two voices would be fine. Let's see, maybe I'll stick it, maybe I'll stick it in the soprano. And I need to remember, I can see that it's a sharp on it and I've got it circled. I'm gonna circle it here. So I just remind myself that it's gonna need to resolve. Okay, and then F, A, I need C as my third note. Smoothest place to put it then would be, it's gonna be here, right, in the tenor voice. That's a step, this would be a leap. So smoothest place would be to put it here. And then if it's a root position chord, I double the root. So I need another F, and that looks great because it's gonna stay put on the same thing, right? So everything's moving by step, by common tone or step, that looks good. Okay, so check my check for parallels, right? This goes down, anything else go down? Nope, nothing else goes down by step, right? 
stays the same. We don't worry. This goes up by step. Anything else go up by, go up by step? Nah. Nope. Up by third? Nope. No parallels. We're good to go. Okay, so before I go into the next chord, if you have any tendency tones, you need to resolve them, right? So leading tone, if it's in the outer voice, it needs to resolve up to scale degree one. So before I even write the one chord, I'm just going to write this because I know there's no argument. This has to resolve up because it's in the outer voice. Okay, root position chord means the root goes in the bass. I write my bass first. All right, uh, I've already got two Bs. I need a D and then an F. So smoothest place to put D would be which voice? It would be tenor, right? That'd be a step. This is a skip. So smoothest place to put it would be the tenor. And then I need an F is my last note here. If I leave it there, common tone, that looks good. All right, checking for parallels. Anything else go up by step? Yes, I see one. Do you see it? What else goes up by step? It is the tenor voice, right? Okay, so what is the interval between these? D to B is A, sixth. Parallel sixths are just fine. Okay, this stays the same. We don't worry about it. This leaps down. Nothing else leaps down. We're set. We're good to go. Okay, so we have checked for all of our parallels. You can see that all of our tendency tones in the outer voices are resolving up by step. So I'm going to go, I'm going to play this so we can hear this example here. All right, here we go. All right, happy part writing. 